Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another video. I have my friend Joe here from Connecticut. Joe, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be testing out five different video decoders. Joe's up in Connecticut. I'm here in North Carolina. We have quite the interesting setup. So we're going to set the stages for you, let you know how we got all this working and configured. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Joe now, and he can talk about what's happening on his end up in Connecticut. Hey, everybody, and thanks, Tony, for having me as a guest appearance on your channel. Good to be back. Um, so up here in Connecticut, in my studio, um, I'm in my control room here. So I'm sending an SRT signal from the SRT encoder from my studio up to Amazon Web Services using AWS Elemental Media Connect. So it goes SRT into AWS. And then the reason why I'm doing that is because that allows me to send five SRT streams out of AWS down to Tony in North Carolina, and they're leaving the cloud all at the exact same time. So this is an accurate test. So we could basically see that the, the decoders that are sitting in Tony's studio are receiving the video at the exact same time. And on my end here, I have all five decoders. So the five decoders we're testing today are the Pearl Nano, the Kill of You D350, the Data Video NVD35, the U-Ray decoder, and the Magewell Pro Convert. So what I have here is I have all of them set up, connected to my home network. They're all connected with the exception of the Pearl to uh, bi-directional converters so that we're converting SDI into HDMI, and then I'm taking the HDMI input into my ATEM Extreme here. The only uh, device that's not connected that way is the Pearl Nano, and we're just running straight HDMI out of the back of the Pearl Nano and into the ATEM. So uh, to get this all working, Joe had to do his magic on his side with uh, AWS, and on my side, I just had to make sure that I set up port forwarding for each of the devices to accept the SRT feeds, again, with one exception, uh, that being the Data Video NVD35. That one is actually acting as the caller in this case. The other four are set up as the listeners. In case you don't know what SRT is, it stands for Secure Reliable Transport, and it's made for transporting video across the internet. So the internet being kind of fluctuating up and down, packets lost, jitter, it's, it's sort of made for that. Versus RTMP, which you might be familiar with when you're sending to YouTube or Facebook or something else, um, it's, it's not as reliable, basically, over the internet. So SRT is, is a cool, newer, transport um, technology. It's, it's been around for a bit, but it's now starting to really catch on. In fact, cameras themselves are starting to have SRT encoders in them so that in the future, we'll be able to just have a camera, but not necessarily the whole production team on site. All right. Thanks for that, Joe. And again, just to set the stages a little further, uh, the internet connections we're using, we're both on symmetrical fiber, one gig, and we're testing at 30 frame, a true 30 frames per second. And just to add a little bit more color on this test versus how you might use SRT in general, the test we're doing is originating in Connecticut in the U.S., and then it's going to Northern Virginia, U.S. East 1 um, in AWS, so it's that region on the East Coast of the United States. And then from there to North Carolina, just south of Virginia, um, to Tony. And we're doing that so that we can split the signal using AWS as a tool, but we don't have to, in, in a real production workflow, we wouldn't have to do that. We could have encoders out in the field, encoders in another studio, and we could be sending that signal straight from my studio to Tony's studio, for example, where he could be adding graphics and then sending it to the final delivery mechanism, whether that's HLS um, on a website, whether that's YouTube or Facebook or whatever, pick your, pick your platform. One last thing, uh, if you want to dive a little deeper into SRT, we did do a live stream about a year or so ago with another fellow content creator. I'll put the link down in the video description if you're interested to learn more. Let's start by taking a look at the Uray HD video decoder. It supports H.265 and H.264. Currently retails on Amazon for about $228. On the back of the unit here, you can see it's got composite video out, a reset button, audio line out, SDI out, 
VGA out, HDMI out. It's got a LAN port and a DC 12 volt power port. It does come with the power supply. And just to give you a little reference to put things into perspective, that's the size in relationship to an iPhone 15. Next, we're looking at the Magewell Pro Convert, the NDI to SDI model. It currently retails at the time of this video for $425. Again, in relationship to the size of the iPhone, you can see it's very, very tiny form factor, which makes it great for carrying multiple of these easily in your gear bag. Taking a closer look at the device itself on the back or on the bottom, you have a USB-B port, which also doubles as a five volt power port. It does come with a power adapter, but the gigabit ethernet port also supports PoE, so this device can be powered up over PoE as well. On this side here, it has a USB-A port, and then here is your SDI out port. On the side of the unit, there is a quarter 20 for easily mounting on a cold shoe on top of a camera or on a tripod. Next up is the Kiloview D350 video encoder. Again, in relationship to the size of the iPhone, you can see it here. It's a very nice compact form factor. It has a little display on the top here. And then if you look here, it has an SDI out port, a line out port, HDMI 1 and HDMI 2 out port. And then on this side here, you have your power port. It does come with a power supply, a USB-A port, a USB-C port, and then Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2, this device can also be powered up using PoE. Currently retails on the market for $699. Another decoder that we are testing in this video is the Data Video NVD-35 Mark II. This decoder retails currently for $719. And as you can see in relationship to the size of the iPhone 15, we are getting into a much bigger form factor with this decoder. If we take a look at the front, you can see the decoder does come with an on off button, which is a nice feature. It does have two USB ports on the front, LAN status lights. On the rear of the decoder, you can see here an SDI port, composite video port out, audio left and right, RCA ports, gigabit LAN port does not support PoE, two more USB ports, a GPI port, and then your 12 volt power port, and it does also come with the included power supply. And finally, the last decoder that we'll be testing in this video is the Epifan Pearl Nano, currently retailing for $1,999. Now, this is much more than a decoder. It's an encoder, it could be a switcher. It comes fully packed with features, so be sure to check it out at epifan.com. Taking a look at the form factor, again, it's one of the larger decoders we're testing, as you can see in relationship to the iPhone 15. Taking a look at the front of the decoder, you can see here it's got a nice size display. It's got navigation buttons here. You have a record button, your stream button. It also does have an eighth inch out audio out. So looking at the back of the Nano, it has two XLR inputs, RCA input, HDMI in, HDMI pass-through, SDI in, this is not SDI out, PoE gigabit port. It does support PoE, so it can be powered using the gigabit ethernet port or the 12 volt power port. It does come with the power adapter. It has a USB port and an HDMI out port. Let's take a look now at a comparison chart of all the decoders and some of the other protocols and resolutions and options supported by each of the decoders. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to take a closer look. And if you'd like more information about any one of these devices, please feel free to visit the manufacturer's website. All right, so here's a look at the UI of the Data Video NVD35 Mark II. We're on the home page. To configure this device, let's click on settings, go over to live stream setup, and here you can configure the SRT stream. Now we've only been able to get it to work as the caller. We have not figured out how to receive as the listener. So data video, if you're watching this video, put a comment down in if it can be set up as a listener or reach out to either Joe or myself and let us know. But pretty clean overall interface, nice and simple to navigate, well done. 
Next, moving on to the Magewell Pro Convert. Here is a look at the home page. A lot of statistics and information to set up the SRT source. We're gonna come into the source tab. To add a source, just click the add button. Now here you can see we already have our source. If I click edit, you can see how it's configured. Now we have it set up as listener mode. It could also be caller as well. But for our test, we conducted the Magewell as the listener. Has all of the other parameters, just like the rest of the coders. Let's move on now to the U-Ray. The U-Ray here, another clean, simple interface. If we come down to address setting here, you can see the parameters for setting up the U-Ray decoder as a listener. Again, not much to it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Moving on to the D350 from Kiloview. Now this, in my opinion, is one of the nicest, most well thought out user interfaces. And I've done a series of videos on this device. So if you want, check out my channel. I'll put links down in the video description. But again, very simple to configure. Just come over here and hit the add button. I already have one set up for the SRT test. And here you go, here are all the settings. Again, this can be set up as caller or listener. For our test, we set it up as the listener. And yeah, that's about it. Again, a very well-designed, nicely thought out user interface. And finally, we have the Epifan Pearl Nano. Now, this may seem a little bit overwhelming at first, but you gotta remember the Epifan Pearl Nano is not simply a decoder, it's an encoder, it's a switcher. It does a whole ton of things, more things than I've even had the chance to investigate. However, to add your SRT source, just come over here and click on add input. You can see we already have one added for our test. Once you click on it, you can see all of the same similar types of parameters to configure that the other decoders have as well. The nice thing about the Pearl Nano is it does give you a preview. So does the D350. I do not believe the U-Ray, the Magewell, or the Data Video gives you a preview. In this section, you're seeing the five SRT streams being ingested simultaneously. If you look closely, you can see subtle differences in color, positioning, and of course, latency. In the next section, we're going to zoom into each decoder full screen so you can get a better look. All right, so Joe, that was an interesting test. I had a lot of fun today, um, although it did take us a little bit to get it up and running. I know uh, looking at the clock, roughly about 45 minutes to an hour to get it all configured with the port forwarding and uh, locking down the IP address so that the network on my side is secure. I know you had a little bit of a setup on your side. Uh, to get it working in AWS. But overall, I think it was a success that we were able to actually get all five streams here successfully. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that in addition regarding the setup? 
Yeah, just that um, you'll have to remember when you're streaming, if you were streaming from one SRT encoder to an SRT decoder, that one side is the caller and one side is the listener. It doesn't necessarily matter which side is which. It's just who's originating that call. But the listener side, so if, if I'm the caller and Tony's the listener, Tony has to do a port forward, like in his router, he has to say, when you see traffic hitting the firewall, send it over to this decoder. So I think that's that's a key thing is that um, these boxes don't necessarily work out of the box. Um, you do have to do some port forwarding in, in most cases. I think the Epifan Pearl Nano, um, if you have those managed, there, there might be, and you're using their cloud service, that's one example where you might be able to um, end data video, you might be able to not do the port forwarding. But in most cases, if you have an encoder and a decoder and you're using SRT, the listener side is going, like who's answering the call is going to need to have a port forward. So that that's definitely takes a little bit of time um, to, to set up, especially in our case where we have so many decoders that we were testing. But it all worked out well. It's interesting to see the, the slight differences. So the other big takeaway for me is that the user interfaces are pretty wildly different. Um, so depending on, I guess, who's using it, whether it's, you know, you, you're feeling pretty technical, technically savvy, and really you can get away with using any user interface, then that might change your, your uh, buying decision. Um, but, you know, some are definitely more intuitive, more easy to use than others. And um, there's, you know, pros and cons. To, to all that. So anyway, back to you, Tony. Thanks so much, Doug. All great points that you just made. Yes. I do want to point out that if you were paying attention to the footage, the test footage, you could see slight differences in the color profiles, the positioning, as well as the audio uh, when you got to the individual full shot clips. For example, we had some problems with the audio on one of the devices. Uh, so again, just different things to consider when making a purchase. Again, this video is for informational purposes only. Joe and I are not recommending any one device over the other. We're not saying this one's better. This one's not get this one, get that one. This was hopefully to educate you a little bit about transporting video using SRT over the internet and helping you make an educated decision in a purchase. Yeah, definitely leave in the comments below if you have questions or comments about these particular boxes. To Tony's point, this is informational and we wanted to learn because we have use cases of our own for SRT. Um, and there's quite honestly a lack of content out there. And even just if you're Googling what decoders exist and encoders exist, it's it's oftentimes hard to find. Um, so that's why we put together this video. So it's great working with you, Tony, again. Great here as well, Joe. Once again, I'd like to thank Joe for participating and collaborating with me on this video. I hope it was informational for all of you. For more content like this, click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.